Hi, this is Chase from Optics Planet, and I'm here to tell you a little bit about night vision. Uh, night vision can be one of those really complicated subjects. We have devices that range from $100 all the way up into $10,000. And whether you're a hunter, a backpacker, law enforcement, military, uh, no matter what your application is, if you're doing something at night and you know you need night vision, uh, but you might not necessarily know what type of night vision you need or what will get you there in your budget that you have. A good place to start is with generations. And when I'm talking about generations, I'm talking about the image intensifier tube because that's what night vision really is. It's image intensification and more so is light amplification. Most of these night vision devices here will have some sort of image intensifying tube and those are broken up by generations. Night vision technology is actually much older than most of you probably think. It first started in the 1920s right around there and really morphed into something that was more usable in the World War II era. The first man portable unit was a T3 carbine, which was a short carbine that was used for the first time on Okinawa in World War II. In some of the after action reports that I've read, it was an extremely successful system. And that's what we kind of consider generation zero. It was an active unit, so you had to, it used an infrared illumination source. It wouldn't take ambient light, uh, so it sent out an infrared uh, light source, and then the image that came back is what they used to engage their targets. Shortly after World War II, and more so in the Vietnam era, is where Generation One comes in. And that's the baseline in which we sell, is Generation One technology. And that was the first type of night vision that used a passive system. So it took ambient light and intensified it into a usable image. Uh, and what you have with generation one is a photocathode, which converts photons, which we see into electrons. There's a little bit of amplification that goes inside there. And then it produces, it takes those electrons and produces them into photons with what's called a phosphor screen. It's a green phosphor screen. That's why we see it as green. With generation one technology, you only have about 1,000 times light amplification. That sounds like a lot, but when I get into the next generations, it's much more than that. They come in all shapes and sizes. Uh, pretty much everything that you see here, there's a generation one equivalent. I'll get more into these exact items in a little bit. Between generation one and generation two, image intensifier tubes is the biggest jump and that is because of the microchannel plate. The microchannel plate sits in between the photocathode and the phosphor screen, so it sits right in the middle, and it amplifies the electrons by tens of thousands. So it is a huge increase in performance, an increase in resolution, signal to noise. It's an overall much better image than you would see with a Generation 1 device. Furthermore, with Generation 2, some manufacturers have even further stratified the Generation 2 technology. Uh, they call them all different kinds of things, commercial grade tubes, high performance plus, um, and all these are, are slight differences, very slight in tube construction, or higher specifications. Um, so one might have a slightly higher resolution or signal to noise ratio than the other, and that's so the user can pick a slightly better tube, but not quite a Generation 3 tube. Uh, light amplification in Generation 2 is about 20,000 times, so it is a huge increase from Generation 1, which is 1,000. Uh, generation 3, there's only a small increase in, in performance, and that's because they just changed up uh, the photocathode. Uh, they use a slightly different material, and it's a little more efficient, so you get a little higher resolution, a uh, little higher signal to noise, uh, overall better image. And this kind of brings me to Generation 4. There is and there isn't a Generation 4. Part of a Generation 3 tube is a ion barrier on the microchannel plate. Uh, and this helps to protect the uh, photocathode from damage. Uh, as the electrons are being amplified in the microchannel plate, some of them come back and hit that photocathode and can damage it. So they put that screen on there, a little, a little film, many times thinner than a human hair. It's extremely thin. What they did for Generation 4 was they ITT removed that film. And what they found was that they got much higher performance, much higher resolution, uh, brighter image, higher gain. But as on the downside, it damages that photocathode. So the tube life is significantly lower. 
the military didn't want that because it didn't meet their their tube specifications. So what they did was made the film extremely thin. So they took the standard Gen 3 film, made it thinner, and they call that a Generation 3 pinnacle. It's a proprietary system by ITT. It is, it is the, the standard for which the military uses right now. Our PVS-14, our OutMod PVS-14 has a Generation 3 pinnacle image intensifier tube. Now on top of all these generations, one, two, and three, there's another technology called white phosphor. A couple other manufacturers have different names for it, but essentially what it is, is instead of a green phosphor screen, it's a white phosphor screen. So the image is in grayscale. And some people have told me that they feel like it has higher contrast, you can more easily distinguish between items or, or objects that you're looking at. That might be the case. Uh, I'm former military, I've got a, a few thousand hours with green PVS-14, you know, green night vision. So that's what I'm used to. So with the white phosphor technology, it's kind of a personal preference. You know, if, if you don't like the green or if it gives you headaches or something, you know, try the white out. There's two generations, it's, it's in generation two and three. Last but not least is digital technology. And uh, this is kind of newer, uh, it uses CCD chips. Um, much like you know, a regular video recorder has a night vision device if you have one, uh, it's the same type of technology. It's not quite generation two, but it's better than generation one if I were to rank them. Uh, the downsides, they, they eat up batteries and they're, they're heavily reliant on infrared. Um, infrared illumination, if I didn't cover it yet, is kind of like a flashlight for night vision. You can only see it with night vision. It's not in the, in, in the visible spectrum. Um, at most, if you're looking at an infrared illuminator, such as this one, you'll see a faint, faint red glow. But the picture is pretty nice. And one of the benefits of digital night vision, such as this iGen, is uh, you can take pictures with it. On the back here, there's a SD card, and you can snap pictures with traditional night vision devices. When I say traditional, I mean generation one, two, and three. Uh, it's hard to take pictures. You have to attach a camera to the ocular of the device to get a picture. Most of them don't have internal systems for capturing images. Uh, with digital night vision, it's a lot easier because it's all digital. One of the cool things about digital night vision is that it can't be damaged by light. Uh, with the other generations, generation one, two, and three, excessive light will hurt the image intensifier tube. Uh, digital, that's not a problem. So you can have day-night systems uh, together kind of a nice feature. Also very budget friendly. Uh, so if you're, if you're operating on a tight budget like myself, digital is, is a good, uh, if you can't quite afford generation two, digital is a good area uh, to look at. I get a lot of questions on how far am I gonna be able to see with this device. Uh, that's very subjective for a couple of reasons. First, as I kind of discussed earlier, it uses ambient light. Image intensification uses ambient light, so it depends on how much light there is outside. On a full moon with a generation three device, you might be able to see five, six, seven hundred, eight hundred yards. Uh, then with no moon, pitch black, or in a basement, you might only be able to see 25 yards without an infrared illuminator. Same thing with generation one. You know, with, with no moon, no light, you, you're only gonna be able to see a few feet. Uh, a little bit of light, you know, 25, 30, 45 yards. Uh, and then if you have a full moon, you're gonna be able to see 100, 150 yards with a generation one night vision device. It, it is largely dependent on ambient light and also your vision, user's vision. Some people like myself, we just have terrible vision. And what I see through a night vision device isn't the same as what a guy with 2010 vision sees. So it is, is very conditional on your operational environment and the user. Next up, I'm going to cover the types of devices. First up, I'm gonna cover the monocular. This, what you see here is a PVS-14 monocular. It is the most highly adaptable uh, night vision device there is. Uh, as you can see right now, it's in a helmet mounted configuration, so I can run around hands free. This leaves my hands to manipulate a weapon, uh, to navigate obstacles. Uh, you can also see that I have it up here mounted behind a night vision compatible red dot sight. Uh, there's a ton of different mounts, GG&G, &G, Summit, uh, Aimpoint, 
almost everybody makes one that'll attach it to a rail behind a red dot sight. Uh, another benefit of a monocular, more of a general benefit, is that you only have one eye behind night vision and the other eye is conditioned to the ambient lighting conditions. And the benefit of that is when you switch either up or to an area where you don't want to be looking through that device, you have one eye that can be used for that close-in stuff. Uh, whenever you've used a night vision device, uh, if you have, you'll notice that when you flip up or take it away from your eye, your eye is adjusted to that brighter light through the view screen. So you really, it takes some time for your eye to adjust and it really is unusable. There'll be a big purplish haze right in your field of view. And uh, so the benefit is you have one eye that's always ready to go, one eye that's always attuned to the, to the night vision. A lot of the other monoculars use proprietary systems and then others use the MUM or MUM mounting interface like you see here, kind of like a little dovetail system uh, that clamps onto this rail. Uh, so the, the two major players are the military spec uh, PVS-14 style mounting system and then the MUM which you see here on our op mod Gen 1 monocular. Next I'm going to cover a biocular. What you see here is a PVS-7. There are two eyepieces to one objective and the benefit to that is both of your eyes if, if you're in a stationary position and you're just and you don't have to move you're not going to be going in and out of various lighting conditions it's very easy on your eyes. With the PVS-14, with the monocular, it can get kind of distracting. It takes some time to get used to. With this, it's a little easier. Uh, your field of view is a little more restricted uh, because you're going through one objective, uh, but it's, it's a great device if you're in those stationary positions. Next is a binocular. So two eyepieces, two objectives. Uh, these are again great for stationary positions. So if you're lucky enough to be in a rural area on your porch, you know, you can go out every night and you know, scan for critters. If you're looking for coyotes, if you're a hunter, it usually has some kind of magnification, which is nice. The PVS-14 and the PVS-7 here, and a lot of the monoculars don't have any magnification. They can, but a lot of them don't. This one, this binocular does. A rifle scope, when, and when I'm talking about a night vision rifle scope, I'm talking about something that's dedicated to that weapon system. So if you have an AR-15, you have multiple upper receivers, you can dedicate one of those upper receivers to a night vision device. Uh, most of these, 99% are only night vision. Uh, there's not very many day-night systems out there. So let's say you have a, a day scope sighted zeroed in. You only have one. You don't want to have to switch it out with a dedicated night scope. So what you can do is you can purchase a clip-on device. And what that'll do is attach to the objective of your day scope and essentially turns it into a night vision rifle scope. You don't have to adjust the zero on your scope. Uh, there's no parallax shift located here. Um, there's uh, uh, quite a few ways to attach this. Uh, what you see here is attached to the quad rail forend or pictain rail forend. Uh, you can also use various adapters uh, to attach it directly to the objective. So if you have a Remington 700 or something without a rail in front of your scope, you can attach this guy to it. And there's different shims that'll fit inside here and, and wrap around the objective. So you can quickly clip it on to your your, uh, your uh, day scope and you have a night vision rifle scope. Now I'm going to cover a few of the terms that you might hear uh, regarding night vision. Uh, first is gain. Gain is essentially the amount of times light is amplified inside the unit. Uh, so the higher the gain, the more light amplification. Uh, most devices will have a gain control and how this looks to the user is a brightness control. Uh, so you turn the gain up, uh, the brightness will increase, turn it down, it'll decrease. A uh, side effect is that you'll see more noise inside the unit. Uh, next is resolution. This is probably the most salient uh, uh, specification that you see with night vision. Uh, and resolution is measured in line pairs per millimeter. Uh, the more line pairs, the higher the resolution the unit. Uh, so you ideally you want a higher resolution unit, as high as what fits inside your budget. Next up, and probably the most important, is signal to noise ratio. Uh, and that it can be described as uh, the efficiency in which it 
produces or sends an image to the output. Uh, so we see this as the fuzziness inside of uh, the unit. Uh, so the better the signal to noise ratio, the higher the ratio, the lower that static, that fuzziness is that you'll see. Uh, the lower, the more fuzzy it'll be. Uh, so this is an extremely important measure. Last thing I want to cover is uh, auto-gated. What does auto-gated mean? Uh, it's in reference to the power supply. Uh, with Generation 3 units, uh, and in particular Generation 3 Pinnacle, uh, they have, most of them will have, all the Pinnacles, most Generation 3 will have an auto-gated power supply. And this directly affects a microchannel plate. Uh, and it will regulate the power to that microchannel plate. Uh, and where this benefits you is when you're in an uh, operational environment with dynamic lighting conditions, uh, you're going to see halo without an auto-gated power supply. What that does is reduces that halo. Uh, and so you can use that device in a whole range of operational environments. Uh, it won't, if you have an auto-gated power supply, uh, it won't damage your image intensifier tube. A really nice feature, especially for the military. I can't tell you how many times I went from pitch darkness to an urban area, uh, and auto-gated power supply really helped with staying on target and reducing those blooms. So there you have it. I hope night vision is a little more understandable to you now. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, uh, shoot us an email, call us, uh, put something in the comments section. Uh, all these products are available at opticsplanet.com. This is Chase. Thanks for watching.